Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In California, seven people were killed and another person critically injured Monday, as a gunman opened fire on two sites in the coastal community of Half Moon Bay. Police say the suspect, 67-year-old Chun Li Zhao, turned himself into police after the massacres. Authorities could not confirm whether the semi-automatic weapon he used was obtained legally. A local official says the victims were Chinese and Latinx farm workers at a local mushroom farm, where Zhao reportedly worked for decades. Dave Pine is with San Mateo County Board of Supervisors. But in the end, there are simply too many guns in this country, and there has to be a change. This is not an acceptable way for a modern society to, to live its, and conduct its affairs. There have been three mass shootings in California in the past three days. In Oakland, California, at least one person was killed and another seven injured in a shootout at a gas station just after 6 p.m. on Monday night. It came as police in Des Moines, Iowa, charged an 18-year-old with murder after a shooting at a center that provides education for struggling high school students. Two students were killed in Monday's assault in Iowa, and a teacher was injured. Meanwhile, the death toll from Saturday night's massacre at a Lunar New Year celebration in Monterey Park, California, has risen to 11, after another victim died in the hospital. Investigators said Monday they recovered 42 bullet casings from the scene of the attack, the Star Ballroom Dance Studio. A 26-year-old man is being credited with thwarting an even larger tragedy after he wrestled the shooter's gun away from him at a second second studio. Brandon Say said he confronted the 72-year-old gunman, Hu Kan Tran, after Tran drove to another dance hall and appeared to be loading his semi-automatic assault pistol. Something came over me. I, I realized I needed to get the weapon away from him. I needed to take this weapon, disarm him, or else everybody would have died. Police reportedly took five hours to alert the public that the gunman was on the loose Saturday night. Tran was found dead the next day of a self-inflicted gunshot wound in his van. The Los Angeles County Coroner's Office has so far named four of his victims, among them 65-year-old Mamai Nan, whose family said in a statement Monday Quote, she spent so many years going to the dance studio in Monterey Park on weekends. It's what she loved to do. But unfairly, Saturday was her last dance, unquote. On Monday, residents of Monterey Park held a candlelight vigil to mourn the victims of Saturday's massacre. Local resident An Lao organized the vigil. We never thought that it would be one of us. And it's so shocking. We can't accept it. And the reason we came together is basically I was talking to our friends and I thought we have to do something just to just to get our emotions out, just to comfort each other, just to tell each other that we can go forward. In the wake of the shootings, cities, including New York and Los Angeles, have stepped up security precautions for Lunar New Year celebrations, fearing more violence against Asian American and Pacific Islander communities. After headlines, we'll speak with Dr. Connie, Dr. Connie Wun, co-founder of the AAPI Women Lead Organization, and Nick Saplina of the group Every Town for Gun Safety. A warning to our audience, the following headline contains graphic images and descriptions of police violence. In Tennessee, the parents of a 29-year-old African-American man who died after he was brutally beaten by Memphis police say their son was defenseless during the ordeal. Tyree Nichols died of kidney failure and cardiac arrest on January 10, three days after his violent arrest following a traffic stop. On Monday, Memphis officials privately showed police body cam footage of Nichols' arrest to family and attorneys. They said, after viewing the video, Nichols was pepper sprayed, tased, restrained, kicked, and beaten. This is family attorney Antonio Romanucci. He was defenseless 
the entire time. He was a human pinata for those police officers. It was an unadulterated, unabashed, non-stop beating of this young boy for three minutes. Oh my God. That is what we saw in that video. In the wake of Nichols' death, Memphis police officials fired five officers for violating department policies, including use of excessive force, failing to render aid. Like Nichols, all five of the former officers are black. Tyree Nichols was a skilled skateboarder, an amateur photographer, and father to a young son. Four more members of the far-right group, the Oath Keepers, were convicted of seditious conspiracy Monday for plotting to keep Donald Trump in power after the 2020 election, resulting in the deadly January 6 insurrection at the Capitol. Last month, the jury also convicted Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes of the same charges. In related news, an Arkansas man who was photographed with his boot on a desk in House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office during the attack on the Capitol was convicted Monday on eight charges, including obstruction of an official proceeding. Richard Barnett, who was also convicted for carrying a stun gun inside the Capitol, faces up to 47 years in prison. This follows the arrests of three active-duty Marines who've been charged for taking part in the Capitol insurrection. Mika Coomer, Joshua Abate and Doug Dodgedale Hellenin were among the mob of Trump supporters attempting to stop the counting of the electoral votes on January 6, 2021. Here in New York, a former senior FBI official was indicted in a federal court in Manhattan Monday after prosecutors accused him of taking hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes and conspiring to get Russian billionaire Oleg Deripaska removed from a U.S. sanctions list. 54-year-old Charles McGonigal pleaded not guilty to the charges, which include money laundering and violating U.S. sanctions. The United States and Israel have launched one of their largest ever joint military exercises in the latest ratcheting up of tensions over Iran's nuclear program. The exercise, codenamed Juniper Oak, involves thousands of soldiers, a dozen naval vessels and over 140 warplanes, including nuclear-capable bombers. In the occupied West Bank, Palestinian protesters gathered Monday at the site of a Bedouin village after two high-profile Israeli lawmakers demanded its demolition to make way for illegal Israeli settlements. This is Aija Halim, a spokesperson for the Bedouin villagers. The existence of settlements here means fragmentation of the West Bank. This village is the key for peace in the Middle East, or the dream of every Palestinian for the establishment of a state. If this village is taken and gone, and they confiscate the area from Jerusalem to the Dead Sea, the West Bank will be split into West Bank North and South. On Monday, Human Rights Watch warned in a new report that Israeli guidelines on access to the West Bank for foreigners threatened to further isolate Palestinians from loved ones in global civil society. The group added in a statement, quote, by making it harder for people to spend time in the West Bank, Israel's taking yet another step toward turning the West Bank into another Gaza, where two million Palestinians have lived virtually sealed off from the outside world for over 15 years, unquote. In Brazil, President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva has fired the commander of Brazil's army two weeks after the attempted coup and violent attack on government buildings in the capital, Brasilia, by supporters of the far-right former president, Jair Bolsonaro. Army General Julio César de Azuja is the highest ranking of dozens of military officers removed by President Lula over their suspected involvement in the January 8th riots. In other news from Brazil, authorities said Monday they've identified a Colombian illegal fish trader and gang leader as the person suspected of orchestrating the murders of British journalist Dom Phillips and Brazilian indigenous advocate Bruno Pereira last June. Ruben Dario de Silva Villar is already in the custody of Brazilian police. He's accused of running an illegal fishing network near Brazil's borders with Peru and Colombia, and the region where Pereira and Phillips went missing days before their remains were found. 
Meanwhile, the Brazilian president, Lula, has accused Jair Bolsonaro's far-right government of committing genocide against the Yanomami people of the Amazon. Lula's remarks came after he visited Yanomami communities as they face a humanitarian and health crisis triggered by illegal mining that polluted rivers and destroyed forests, depriving people of key food sources. Brazil's justice minister said he plans to order a federal investigation into the crimes. The music and audio streaming giant Spotify says it's laying off 6 percent of its workforce, about 600 workers. Nearly 50,000 employees at U.S.-based tech companies have been laid off so far this year, following nearly 100,000 tech layoffs last year. In California, workers at a Pete's Coffee store in Davis have approved the coffee chain's first union. Pete's Workers United celebrated the victory, tweeting, we will not be the last, unquote. Starbucks Workers United, which has unionized hundreds of Starbucks shops across the U.S., said on social media, quote, solidarity from coffee shop to coffee shop, welcome to the labor movement. And in Alabama, a worker who helped lead an unsuccessful union organizing drive at Amazon's warehouse in Bessemer says he was abruptly fired without explanation. Daryl Richardson, who led a campaign to organize his co-workers into the retail, wholesale and department store union, says he was given no reason for the firing, but he believes it was because of his union activity. This comes just days after the National Labor Relations Board threw out Amazon's objections to a union drive at the company's massive Staten Island warehouse, known as JFK 8, declaring the Amazon labor union won last April's election. To date, it's the only successful unionization campaign at an Amazon facility. It came as the percentage of U.S. workers who are members of a union fell to a new low in 2022, just over 10 percent of the working population. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.